as a footnote, um, with that tremendous variation in the amount of water that would be going into the, the, the canals that with that second reservoir, there are two reservoirs. There's one behind the main dam, the Pimentau Dam, which would go up towards Altamira and even flood part of Altamira. Then you would have an entirely new reservoir that doesn't exist where these artificial canals would be built and create this new reservoir. So the question is, if you have to maintain, for example, 800 cubic meters of water going through the Pimental Dam, and there are years when there's that's the amount of water, or even less, on the Xingu, that would mean zero water going into the through these artificial canals into that reservoir. So my question would be, that new artificial reservoir that's being created because of the, the channels, how much the canals, how much would that fluctuate and maybe what could be the implications for methane emissions? Well uh, <laughs> As far as I know, there's nothing published about about a, a plan to have it fluctuate below below uh, this fixed level. But um, and it will be in equilibrium between the two reservoirs. So unless they put a, a little barrier or something in the canal, it's going to be at the same level as the other reservoir within a few centimeters. Um, but you would have stagnant water there for a few months while it's just sitting there. And it's really a unique reservoir for Gate because most reservoirs are, are along the axis of a river where you put a dam and it, it, it floods up a, a natural river basin. But in this case, the reservoir is going perpendicular to the, to the river basins. It's cutting across five different streams that have each one in a separate watershed and going across and has these so-called bottlenecks in between where where the water goes between the different basins. So it's it's much more complicated and, and we'll have these stagnant pools and so forth. Anyway, um, the the important thing is there that the it's economically unviable to have just Bellomonti. The, the in fact there's a, a study you can find the reference in the website there. It was done by the Conservation Strategy Fund and Minister Ice shows very clearly that it's, it's completely economically viable with just one dam. And uh, the difference, that is if you had uh, Babacuara as well, it's uh, around one and a half to two, two and a half billion uh, dollars per year more money that's generated by having the extra water that's generated at Belomonchi in addition to what you get from from the Babacuara Dam. So it's, it, obviously there's a tremendous temptation then to build uh, the second dam. Uh, and of course no one is going to invest uh, over 30 billion reais, around 15 billion dollars, uh, if they're planning to lose money. So, so uh, what uh, what appears to be happening is that once the Belomonti Dam is actually under construction or built, then uh, one would have the other dams being built. And certainly the fact that companies are willing to put money into Belomonti is a sign that they're not playing by the scenario, the official scenario of having only one dam. They must be assuming that there will be the other dams. So the impacts are much greater, and that includes the, the impact on greenhouse gas emissions because you have all the conditions in this other dam to produce a tremendous amount of methane with the water level going up and down by 23 meters, huge reservoir and so forth. Um, and uh, let me uh, mention one other thing. In, in terms of, of the way this is presented to uh, uh, for the climate convention and so forth, there was an amazing interview that was done at Copenhagen by Amazonia.org.br. It's an environmental website in Brazil. Uh, where they interviewed the, the, the diplomat that was the head of the Brazilian delegation. And they asked him, isn't Belo Monte uh, one of the dams that the Brazilian government considers to be clean energy uh, <laughs> and uh, not emitting greenhouse gases. And, and the answer was yes, uh, but the, the Belomonchi isn't in, located in Amazonia, isn't it? A, so the, that is a, the key people that are actually negotiating this and claiming that there's no emissions 
if they don't even know that it's located in Amazonia, how can they be expected to know all the details about how the emissions work and how much they are and so forth? If you count the first 10 years of emission, the average is 11.2 million tons of carbon equivalent. That, in fact, that's using 21 as the uh, the uh, equivalents for for uh, methane. So using one of the other numbers would be more than that. So that's a huge amount for 10 years. That's more than the city of Sao Paulo emits, for example. It's probably about what the Mexico City <laughs> emits, more or less the same size. Uh, and that's for 10 years. Um, then uh, if you if you count it for 20 years, that goes to, down to 6.2 uh, million tons of carbon. Uh, and you have to go for 41 years before it, it actually breaks even in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things to realize about comparing dams and fossil fuels, is that uh, there's a, a tremendous difference in the timing of when the impacts are. There's, with fossil fuels, you burn oil or coal or whatever it is, and you get the electricity at the same time. The impact and the benefit happen at the same time. Whereas with a dam, first you build a dam that has all the concrete and everything and the trees that are killed, huge emission, years before you get a single watt of energy out of it. And then after that, you have a huge peak of emissions in the first years when you have the leaves from the trees that are decaying, you have the carbon that's in the soil that's, that's being oxidized, all of that, uh, giving a huge emission for, say, five or six years. And then after that, it's, it declines, but it doesn't go to zero because you have this drawdown zone, these other things that are renewable, that are, uh, that are giving you a sustained emission. Uh, but it takes many years then for the the fossil fuel that is replaced to catch up with uh, with those huge emissions in the beginning. So uh, it's a matter of how long it takes, and certainly 41 years is a long time, and that's calculating with giving no value to time. If you give any value to time, it goes on beyond that. So, uh, so there's, it's uh, uh, an important thing to realize that the, the way people talk about this, you have to realize when they're talking about it. And the question is partly how long it's going to be sustained. Now, it, emissions can be sustained for a long time. Uh, in fact, there's a, a very good example from the Brazilian National Inventory that was released in 2004 in the, the uh, Congress of the Parties in Buenos Aires uh, that calculates submissions for various dams, not including Balbina. <laughs> but uh, one of the dams was the Tres Marias Dam uh, in Minas Gerais. Uh, this is a, an old dam. It was 36 years old at the time. This was a dam that was built in 1962 to supply electricity to Brasilia. And it's in a, a Cerrado area. It's now an Amazon forest. And it was the champion of all the dams that were included in the inventory in terms of methane emissions. Methane emissions only measured from the surface of the water, remember, not measuring anything from the turbines. But even so, 36 years old, and it's still right up there at the top, it shows that you can sustain these emissions for a long time. Uh, another example is the Petit So Dam in French Guiana, which is a dam that has much more actual data about it than any other dam, uh, certainly than any dam in Brazil. It was built in 1994, and ever since then there's been monitoring of the methane uh, downstream and in the reservoir and so forth. Um, and you had a big uh, initial emission of greenhouse gases, uh, and that was coming out from uh, diffusion through the through the surface of the reservoir and bubbles coming up through the surface of the reservoir. Uh, and then there was a, about a third of it coming from what they call degassing. That's this, this methane coming out of the water through the turbines. Uh, but the, the diffusion and the bubbles died down after a few years 
Uh, there's still a little bit, but they died way down. But this degassing continued, so that it, it, this is the sustained part of it, is, the, uh, is what is coming out through the turbines. Um, anyway, uh, all of this shows that there is uh, a substantial impact from, from uh, dams. Certainly the dams in the Amazon have not, uh, have not shown themselves to be uh, as, even as good as fossil fuels, for at least for quite a few years after they're built. Not that it lasts forever, but for, for some time. Um, and uh, I think that it's important just to, to state that uh, uh, what is being presented in, in Brazil, not just in Brazil, but in other places, um, is very misleading about the, the, the comparison of the impacts and the, the benefits of these dams. The implication is that if you don't build these dams, Belo Monte, for example, that people will be living in darkness, you won't have electricity for your, your light bulbs and your television set and so forth, and so nobody wants to have that happen. But of course that's not what is going to happen at all, that uh, most of this electricity is being used for what are called electro-intensive industries, especially for making aluminum. Uh, the, and also alumina, in the case of Juriti, which is a big uh, bauxite deposit, and a, a aluminum factory that is opposite the Trombetas River on the Amazon, which will be receiving energy from Belomont. Um, it's an Alcoa uh, plant, uh, also with some Chinese uh, plants as well. Anyway, um, just uh, what four days ago, now the 29th of September, there was an announcement. Uh, that the electro-intensive industries, and it's mostly aluminum, were going to invest 27 billion reais uh, in the next nine years, in, between now and 2020, in building dams in the Amazon uh, for themselves. That is in addition to what the government is <laughs> investing in dams. And that they were going to build 6,600 6, and some megawatts worth of dams in that time. Uh, so this is an incredible uh, amount of uh, investment and impact and is one of the things that produces the least in terms of employment in Brazil. Uh, it's uh, 2.7 uh, uh, jobs per gigawatt hour of electricity that is uh, uh, generated in the aluminum industry. <laughs> which is almost the worst. The worst of the iron alloys, which also uh, receive uh, electricity from these dams. So what it means is there's a lot that needs to be discussed in terms of what is being done with the electricity before you, you have to deal with the, the question of what is the impact of this dam versus that dam and so forth, which is where all the attention is focused now. Okay, I'll end with that and take questions.